Hi, it's Natalie James here from eConcept Consulting. So I went to go and pick up my food shopping from uh, my local Carrefour um, drive the other day. I live in France at the moment and uh, sort of click and collect here is massive, more so than delivering to your home address. Um, anyway, I went to go and pick up my, uh, my food shopping as I said and lo and behold, I was struck with the terrible news that the bottle of red wine that I'd ordered uh, was out of stock, so I had no red wine. And also the packet of dog food that I'd ordered was also out of stock, so they just didn't provide me with any other substitution. So I'm feeling a little bit deflated. I drove home with my food shopping and it got me thinking, what a perfect, perfect topic for me to talk on a vlog today. So today I'm gonna to cover off um, substitutions and out of stocks uh, for online shopping. Um, so uh, the thing that probably baffled me the most with this little um, experience I had at the weekend was that there are plenty of substitutions, especially in France, for different types of red wine um, that they could have offered up um, and also different types of brands, uh, brands and varieties of dog food they could have also offered up. Um, and they missed out on those sales and I thought, goodness me, if they're doing that, um, you know, just the sort of odd 10, 10 pound shopping here that's uh, out of stock here and there, uh, that's really gonna hit um, their online sales and they won't necessarily really understand why. So having worked in this bit before and worked with some of the key retailers such as um, Astro Morrison's on um, out of stock issues um, some, some time ago, I've learned a few, three key tips that I think can really help you with your out of stocks and substitutions. So that's what I shall cover off today. Uh, and this can apply to um, grocery retail. I'd really like to see it being applied actually across fashion and apparel. I think there's a real gap there and a the learning that they could take from retailers from grocery um, into fashion where, whereby they can offer um, substitutions when you're actually shopping online. Uh, obviously not when you've had it delivered. That might not work. Um, right, so first up for my key tip for today is um, looking at how can we make sure that we avoid any out of stocks. So the key thing here is um, obviously some, some of the sort of pure pay retailers such, such as Amazon and Ocado have these huge fulfillment centers, which you will obviously be working with your supply chain manager to make sure that during busy times and also promotional periods that you're up waiting the stock uh, in those fulfillment centers. So that bit's covered off. The bit that probably does need a bit of attention is where you actually still pick from store in some areas. So, um, for example, when you're shopping, um, you know, that there'll be some of the key stores that they will actually pick for online sales. And you'll see as you'll go around to do your food shop when you go in store, there are people going around picking and packing. Um, so there will be key stores that they pick for online. So when you've got a promotional period, it's really, really important that you work cross-functionally with your supply chain to make sure that not only do you up-weight um, your, uh, your stock levels for promotional periods, but you actually work with your retailer to find out which of the stores that are actually used um, that are heavily picked from for online so that you can make sure that you up-weight the supply for those specific stores um, so that they can make sure they've got enough out on shelf and also that they even have some um, out the back in the stock room to make sure that they can keep um, actually topping up uh, topping up the, say, uh, the stock. Because uh, sometimes what you tend to find is during promotional periods is that um, they will stock the shelves, the shoppers come in uh, in store, they pick all the, all the actual product up which is great, but then when it comes to actually picking for the online um, sales, there may be out of stocks on shelves so the picker doesn't, can't and uh, is not able to actually pick it. So um, there have been some trials which have been quite successful, I think by Sainsbury's when I was working with them, where they were actually um, trialing doing two different replenishers uh, during the day to make sure that the, the shelves were stocked for online picking as well. So make sure you work with your supply chain and that you limit it, to, you find out which stores um, are picked from for online and that you upweight uh, the supply there, especially during promotional periods. My, my second point uh, is for those retailers that don't work on algorithms or there may be some area where you can actually still have some input into what that algorithm does. So you'll need to find out which ones you can work with and which key retailers you can actually influence. Um, the ones that you can influence, what you need to have a look at is, um, is how can you possibly supply them with, um, with some substitution ideas. So really the best way to go about it is work again in a cross-functional way with your category management team. They should have, if you have them, they have access to, um, especially in grocery, 
um, customer decision trees, which show you the different funnelings of decision making that shoppers make uh, on your type of on your brand. So, for example, whether or not it's to do with um, cereal, is it to do with for children, is it to do for adults, how much sugar in it, is it, has it got chocolate on it, and it will funnel it down until all the different different phases of decision making. And if you use those customer decision trees, they're really really handy for you to be able to go back to your retailer with, with a list of in-brand substitutions so that you can say okay so if you haven't got this particular type of product this is the next one based on these decision trees it's always good to be backed up by data and um, that you should be going for next and if you can't find that one this is the next one now obviously um, i don't suggest you doing it across all your products um, that wouldn't be an efficient use of time just focus on your top selling SKU, so your top um, sort of 20 selling um, SKUs and make sure that you can provide substitution lists for your retailers to then upload into their system to make sure that if there is an out of stock that they know quite clearly what they should be offering up. This can be shown um, actually online or this can actually be fed all the way through to the picker in store that they know what they can offer up as a clear substitution. So all in all again this is helping that shopper uh, making sure that they get what they want from online shopping. Um, my final point, my third point, is around the picking equipment itself. So some retailers will be more sophisticated than others and this is really important to focus on, see the ones again that might need help and the ones that are a little bit more advanced. The ones that you're struggling with or finding are really out of stock, so I would suggest actually going and having a look in store and following one of these pickers and talking to them as they're going around picking and see some of the challenges they come up with. That's really, really important because from doing that, I actually found out that the picker was having a real problem in actually trying to find where the product was. They were really struggling to find which shelf it was on and especially when it was on promotion, what gondola end it was on. So if you can, as a, as a uh, manufacturer, I would strongly suggest as well that when you're providing that substitution list, Find out with working with your with your retailers and um, how uh, you can influence putting the information on that picking um, piece of equipment that they use going around store. So can you have on it which aisle it is in or which shelf and which gondola end it will be on when it's on promotion. Um, that's really, really important because the picker is under quite a lot of pressure for time to get around and obviously um, fill all, all those bags of online shopping to get them delivered out on time. So you really, if you can help um, influence uh, where the product can be found, it will speed it up for the picker. And oh, I've had some really good results on this. There are these small little changes, but actually it really, really helped. The other thing you might want to have a look at as well is um, could you possibly build in um, out of socks or substitutions on the picker's KPIs? This is from, from a retailer's perspective, obviously, but really important to make sure that they realise the importance of um, substituting uh, appropriately where, where possible and that actually it will really help, obviously, um, increase sales. If, if, if you've got every order that's going out that is 100% complete with a really good matching of a substitution, it's, it's, you know, you're keeping your sales there, you're not losing them, so that's always a bonus. So those are my three key tips for today um, for out of socks and substitutions. Um, so I, as I said, first of all, make sure that you can um, get the stores that are picked from uh, online heavily, you upweight the stock in there. My second point was around the stores that you can influence, the ones that don't necessarily work on an algorithm. Can you provide substitution lists and work with your category management team uh, with um, shopper decision trees to provide really good relevant substitutions and then the third one is making sure that the picking equipment um, a is, is very is modern and is up to date but also is it giving the picker as much information as it can to uh, to find that product and can you build in uh, out of stocks and substitutions into the pickers KPIs so that's it from me today I'll be um, messaging you and uh, finding out some more information and sharing that with you when I get it have a good week thanks bye